couple of RFK Fords in the top five. Great job, Keselowski and Busher. And the man that finished second, Ryan Blaney. That's his fourth runner-up finish since his last win 56 races ago. No stage points after starting fifth, but he does lead 47 laps. Here's what he said after that wild finish. Bubba, he's trying to block, which is the right thing to do, but, you know, I think he kind of moved three times, and you don't really get a lot of those. I mean, I, I got to go somewhere, so um, I hate cars got torn up. I hate for us being so close to the win, but uh, and I'm not blaming anybody. It's just hard racing at the end of this thing, and unfortunate, um, you know, cars got tore up, and, and we just missed out on a, another win. Close, close, close block, and just uh, sent us around, so not the 12th fault. Just, uh, I honestly thought that he would leave me high and dry coming back around and so um, just uh, just hate it, hate it from the team and that's how, how it goes so that was, uh, that was our best by far play race that we've ever done so hats off to 23 group great day for us just a crap result so hate it um, I calls that one and man that's just the way it goes so uh, not 12th fault at all it's a typical finish, I would say, at Talladega where drivers are frustrated. In fact, when you hear Bubba and Blaney talk there, the frustration level is up here, and the intensity level on that final restart, it's at the very top as well. Let's go next level with what happened in double overtime to decide it at Talladega. Larry, point out the players here. Yeah, I think they know the intensity is ramping up. Now, Ryan Blaney, he's the leader. He chose the inside in the 12 as the leader had done all day long. Kyle Busch in the 8, he's on the outside. Bubba Wallace is behind Kyle in the 23, but keep an eye on that third row inside Ty Gibbs in the 54. He's going to be a player right as they take the restart because he's going to run out of gas. Yeah, and when he runs out of gas and pulls down to the apron, it creates this huge hole. And the biggest thing that happens there is the 10 car is going to get detached from the 12 car. Well, it takes a little bit of time for the 16 car to fill that gap, get back to the 10 bumper and push him back to the 12. But by the time all that happens, Larry, they're going to lose three rows. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see it right here. Yeah, they finally, they get connected, but look right there. Three cars, Kyle Busch, Bubba Wallace, Brad Keselowski, they've already cleared that inside row. Yeah, and they're, they're headed to the bottom and, and looking for uh, whatever they can do to put themselves in position to be the leaders of the race. But as we come around to turn four, the pack's kind of reforming, and the guys in the front are like, okay, I'm going to get a run. How can I take that run? How can I move up? When do I move up? Who's going to go with me? Who's not going to go with me? It's a little bit of a guessing game at this particular point, but there's a lot of space on the outside right there. So you're going to see uh, the second and third place car of, of Bubba Wallace and Brad Keselowski. Brad's going to get hung out because he, he kind of zigs and zags, and, and Ryan Blaney winds up behind the 23 as we're going back into turn one. Now we've taken the white flag, so all these drivers, they know the next flag, whether it's back to the checkered flag or the caution, it's going to end the race. And you're going to see right here, the blocking has begun. They missed a big chance to wreck right there in turns one, middle of turns one and two. Well, we do a great job of trying to wreck all day. <laughs> but for right now, everybody's flooring it. And Ryan Blaney is not going to lift at this particular point. Bubba's blocking. And as soon as Ryan touches that right rear corner of Bubba's car, his car starts to spin. And, and that's pretty much the end of the day. But you have to block. And you have to floor it, and you have to keep the pass, uh, the throttle down in order to make the pass. So you it just it goes board, wrong. And, and this is what it's all about. And you talk about the blocking. If you're Bubba, you, you do it because, as Larry said, if the caution comes out, the race is over, and he's going to win because he's out front. The only way to win these races is to throw caution to the wind. And at that particular point, Bubba's in control of the race, and you've got to take every chance that you feel like you need to take to win. And there you see Kyle Busch in the eight as this is all is going on. He's going to go to the inside. Now, I want you to watch right there. He goes, yeah, the left side tires are below the double yellow line on that eight car, but he was avoiding the wreck. What he did there was perfectly legal. He goes down, avoids the crash, and this is my favorite part. He's coming back around. The caution comes out. You would think the race is over. Kyle Busch is going to win, but he's got to come around and get the checker. And there's a question mark because he thought he might run out of gas it here, was Kevin. Close. <laughs> uh, we, we had to pit, and, and those guys were in the same fuel sequence that we were, and it was close as, as they got back to the checkered flag. And Blaney was right there. Just in case the eight ran out of fuel, Blaney could have drove by and picked up the checkered flag. Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content, and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.